Let's now learn how to clone and spawn objects into our game. First, we're going to go up here. We're going to add a part. I'm going to select a sphere. Let's make it red. And we're going to look for the position property. We're going to make it 0, 20, 0. We're going to look for the custom physical properties. Check that box. Expand it. Change the elasticity to 1. Elasticity weight to 100. If you have seen our prior tutorial on how to make a bouncy ball, that's what we're doing right here. We're, we're making a bouncy ball. So let's now rename this to ball. That's going to be our ball. We're now going to take our ball and we're going to put it away into the server storage. So server storage is like a storage area that you can store things that you are not using right now. As you can see right now in our workspace, there is no ball in it because we're not using the ball right now. We're putting it in storage. Next, we're going to go and add a script to spawn our ball into the game as we play the game. So we're going to go to the server script service. We're going to add a script. Let's first declare our ball inside the server storage. So we're going to say local ball equal to game dot service storage dot ball next we're going to make a copy of our ball so we're not going to use this ball to move it into our workspace but we're going to create a duplicate copy of that ball so we're going to say local call it a different name so we're going to say copy equal to ball colon clone this clone function is going to give us an exact copy of our ball. So now copy is a clone of the ball. They are both exactly the same. To spawn an object into your game, all you have to do is to parent it to the workspace. So we're going to say copy dot parent equals to game dot workspace. And that is going to spawn our copy of the ball, which is exactly the same as the ball into the workspace. Let's switch back to the game here. You can see there is nothing inside the workspace, right? Now, if I run, run test, there, there you see it. A ball has been spawned into the workspace. Now, what if we want more balls to be spawned into the workspace? What do we do? Well, we have learned before that we can use a while loop to keep repeating a section of code, right? So here, if you want more balls to be spawned into the workspace, you just need to repeat these two statements here multiple times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a while loop here. While true do. So it's going to be an infinite while loop. And I'm going to move these two statements cut inside the while loop paste. Remember, when you use the while loop, you want to put in a task wait to slow down the loop so it doesn't crash your machine. How about this time? We're going to play test and see if we can play with the balls. And whoa, look at all those balls. That is wild. It's too many balls, too many bouncy balls. I don't know if you noticed, but all the balls they spawn at that one same location. The location is the location where we have set the ball to be at. So remember initially we set the position of the ball to be at 0, 20, 0. And that is the exact location that the ball is going to spawn into the game. So if you don't want the ball to always spawn at that same location, you can add a random factor to the location where the ball is going to be spawned in. To do that, I'm going to declare two variables, two random variables. So my first random variables is going to be local, random. Let's call it x equal to math dot random. So remember from our prior tutorial, we learned that math dot random is going to return a random number. How about we do it uh, minus 30 to 30. So it's going to return a random whole number between minus 30 and 30. Here I'm going to do a control shift D to replicate the line. I'm going to change this to Z. 
we're generating a random number and we're loading it into this variable random x. The number is going to be between minus 30 and 30. The same goes for random z. We're generating another random number. We're loading it into this variable random z. Copying the wall into this copy variable. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the position of the ball before we move it into the workspace. So we're going to say copy dot position plus equal a vector 3. So we're adding this vector 3 to the current position of the ball. And the thing that we're adding in is this random factor here. So we got random x for the x component. For the y component, we want to leave it the same. So it's going to start out at position 20 studs above the base plate. And then the final component is the random z. As you may have seen, we had too many balls when we played test earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow down this process. I'm going to do a task weight of 0.1 instead of 0 0.03, which is the default when you don't put anything inside the brackets, inside the parentheses. All right, let's now play test and take a look. And there are all our random balls. You can see now they no longer spawn in one location, but they spawn all over the place because we have added a random factor to the location where they spawn. And there you have it, guys. That's how you duplicate objects in Roblox. Also, this is how you spawn objects into your Roblox games.